It's a little bit awkward moving the case and the machine around um, while you're doing this and while the motor and the light is attached, but that's only temporary. So the first thing that I need to do is loosen this on the right, which is what holds the machine down. Now another thing that I had noticed with this machine is one of the hinges in the back is loose from the case base. Um, but because I'm taking the machine right out of the case, I can fix that. I'm, I'm actually would be fixing the case and not the machine. So once um, the little arm that keeps the machine from lifting up out of, out of the base, once you loosen that screw and push it to the side, all you have to do is tilt the machine backwards like this. And I'm looking for more spiders. See, this is really normal maintenance anyway, where you want to clean out um, not only spiders, but all the dust. And as I said, I've had this machine sitting kind of as a memorial to my grandmother. And I think that my choice is I'd rather be using it more frequently. Underneath, this has legs. Um, on the back, it has a leg here, kind of a leg here, and uh, it doesn't have a leg in the front, so that may affect how it sits on a table. I may have to use the base in order to keep it up off the table. Otherwise, this front section is lower than the actual frame of the machine, and if that's hitting the table you have the machine on, that might be a problem. So this is why removing everything when you have a, a knee bar bent wood case is a little bit different from a machine that has a, a more simple external motor with a foot pedal. But to get the machine out of the case base, underneath um, this leg, just in front of where the hinge is, are what are called set screws. And every of the old Singer machines have these set screws. And they're very small little black screws that basically keep the hinge pins tight on the back of the machine. And you don't ever want to lose them. So you don't have to take them completely out. You just loosen them, which is what I've done. And then you I'm going to pick the machine up off of the hinge pins, like that. And the machine is now removed from the case and the base. So this is the hinge I meant, and it looks like I'm missing a screw that holds it in place. And what I'm going to do temporarily is put the light and the motor and the belt and the two screws, the one for the light and the one for the uh, motor mounting bracket, all right back in the case, like that. And now the case will have to be worked on separately. The next thing I have to find out is whether or not this will turn over sitting on a table. So let's And it does. So I can still use it on a table without a base. And I'm not even in shock from doing that to Grandma's machine. So that's good. Uh, the next step is to put the spoked hand wheel on. And to do that, I need to turn the machine this way. And you can see that there is another set screw in the clutch release knob. This is the clutch release knob that when you loosen it like that, it allows you to wind a bobbin. So I'm going to tighten it back up again. And I'm going to actually loosen this set screw in the clutch release knob. I had also put a hand crank on a Model 66, and the videos for that are um, in with my other videos. 
I'm pretty sure that was a 6614. Now you only have to loosen that screw, not remove it completely. And then you unscrew the clutch wheel. And this is a washer that has three knobs on it and two notches that it sits in. And the shaft will not be moving now. So you want to remember exactly how you had this washer. And I'm just going to place it down on the table in the exact position that it's in now. And you'll notice that the two notches that fit in there point outward. Okay, so now the bobbin winder is not engaged. Now it's just a matter of pulling off the hand wheel. And I'd like to probably clean that a little bit while I have it off. That's just black, black dirt. Now what I do is I take my spoked hand wheel, put it on the same way, and the first thing I notice is that when I lower the bobbin winder, there is almost, almost a half an inch between the bobbin winder and the spoked hand wheel. Now, I don't, I know I don't have that much of an adjustment available. So what I now know is that this is essentially making my bobbin winder non-functional unless I do the research and find out how other people have gotten around that problem. I know uh, you can adjust it to some extent, and I believe, but I'm not positive, that they also have very thick rubber bands that they put on the hand wheel. But those would have to be fairly, fairly thick. They'd have to be at least a quarter of an inch thick, and you'd need two of them in order for that to alleviate that problem. So I have to do a little research on that. I do have a portable bobbin winder called a sidewinder. And I, I personally can just use that. But at the same time, this is going to affect my overall decision because what I like about the idea of this 99 being the hand crank is I would like to just pick it up and go and not have to worry about remembering the bobbin winder, you know, the side winder. So now what I'm going to do is put this washer right back on the way it was, and you have to kind of, you have to make sure that the clutch knob goes in perfectly straight so that it doesn't knock that washer off while you're doing this, or knock it out of place like that. And then after you get that back on there, you tighten up the set screw again. In a way, right now, it's almost a, a point that doesn't matter because the bobbin winder doesn't work, doesn't connect with the hand wheel anyway. So even if I loosen the clutch wheel assembly and turn the wheel, the needle's not going, but I still can't wind a bobbin. But you still want to put it back correctly, even... You know, you want to have it assembled correctly, even if your bobbin winder is too far away. So this uh, solid hand wheel, I will put in the case with the other parts. And now I just put a hand crank on it. This is the hand crank assembly. It has a similar bolt to um, the motor mounting bolt 